Hello, everyone. I'm Yosuke Hayashi from Koei Tecmo Games, the producer of Hyrule Warriors. Today, I'd like to give some new information about Hyrule Warriors, directly, to you. First, I'd like to spend a little time showing you how battles progress in Hyrule Warriors, using the first stage in the game. As you may know, Hyrule Warriors combines two series, The Legend of Zelda and Dynasty Warriors. Based in the world of The Legend of Zelda, you can use simple controls to defeat hordes of enemies with the flashy moves and exciting one-man army action of Dynasty Warriors. On the battlefield, the player is not the only one facing enemies. In addition to many Hyrulean soldiers, other characters like Zelda and Impa will fight alongside you on the same field. Depending on the situation, characters will engage in battle chatter, and the player's objectives will continuously change. There are some enemies you can't defeat easily merely using combo attacks. When you're facing this type of enemy, you must lock onto it using the L button, close the gap, and find the right opening to defeat it. In Hyrule Warriors, many of the gameplay elements are based on those from the Legend of Zelda series. Notice the familiar music when the player acquires bombs. Looks like it's time to use them right away. You can throw bombs to destroy rocks, or even to attack enemies. Okay, now let's look at the map. Enemies are in red, and allies are in blue. On the battlefield, there are many keeps, and by taking over these keeps, you can increase your number of soldier bases, changing the battle situation in your favor. This red square here represents one of the keeps. Defeat the enemies in this keep to take it over. Expanding your territory to create a favorable situation for your army is the most important key to victory. And now, it looks like a giant boss has appeared, King Dodongo. New missions will appear as battle situations change, and the victory conditions will also constantly change. Even just now, the victory condition changed to defeat King Dodongo, so you have to defeat him to clear the stage. Can't damage him much with normal attacks, but since it's a common Zelda convention to use the item you just acquired, let's use the bombs we just got. Once you complete a stage, you'll see your score on screen, and you'll learn rupees and various other materials. I'll explain how you can use these later. In Hyrule Warriors, you can acquire many other familiar items from the Legend of Zelda series. In addition to destroying walls with bombs, you can attack distant enemies using arrows, climb up walls with the hookshot, and more. You have to take advantage of each type of item and think your way through each level as you defeat enemies and explore the field. And just like King Dodongo, who I showed earlier, there are some monsters who are more easily defeated with certain items. For example, here's Goma, if you've played a game from the Zelda series, you've probably encountered this monster before. Its weak spot is its big open eye, but you can't effectively attack it with normal weapons. That's where the bow comes in. 
use different kinds of items to battle various bosses, just like in the Legend of Zelda games. Hello everyone. I'm Eiji Aonuma from Nintendo, and I'm a supervisor on Hyrule Warriors. I'm also the producer of the Legend of Zelda series. In Hyrule Warriors, there are many elements drawn from the Zelda series. I would like to show you one of them right now. Let's start with the Kuko. This is, of course, a past Zelda game. As you probably know, Kukos are a very familiar staple within the Zelda series. You'll notice them here and there in villages and towns, and you can pick one up or attack them. But, if you keep attacking them, it makes them quite angry. Now here's a Kuko in Hyrule Warriors. You have to be careful in this game as well, since they will come after you if you accidentally hit them. But in some situations, you can make them your ally, and they may be able to help you turn the battle in your favor. I'll be back with more in a bit. Now, I'd like to spend a little bit of time introducing you to some of the playable characters in the game. Unlike in traditional Zelda titles, many characters will join the battle in Hyrule Warriors. First up, of course, is Link. In Hyrule Warriors, he appears as a soldier training to defend Hyrule Kingdom, where Princess Zelda lives. His signature weapon is, naturally, a one-handed sword. Link is a well-rounded hero, easy to use for anyone. And he can of course do his famous spin attack. Now for our heroine, Princess Zelda. In the main Zelda series, she normally doesn't get too involved in battles, but she is quite active as one of the playable characters in Hyrule Warriors. Her signature weapon is a rapier. With a fast and fierce combo attack, she can easily plow through monsters. But she can also create arrows of light to take down distant enemies. Impa often appears as a close advisor to Princess Zelda in the core series. Her character is designed as a Sheikah soldier with a bit of Japanese flair. Her weapon is a massively powerful blade with a wide attack range. And she acts and talks much like a samurai. Next up, Another character familiar to Zelda fans, Sheik. Much like Impa, she's a remaining survivor of the Sheikah, and we designed her in the image of a ninja. Of course, her true form is. Well, there might be some of you who don't know, so we'll let those players try Hyrule Warriors and see for themselves. Using her harp and martial arts, she's a speedy fighter in battle. In Hyrule Warriors, we also have more special appearances by characters from three beloved Zelda games, Ocarina of Time, Twilight Princess, and Skyward Sword. First up is Ocarina of Time. Here's Darunia, leader of the Gorons. He swings around his giant hammer with ease and uses brute force to knock back waves of enemies. It's a perfect fit for his dynamic personality. And if you get him in the right mood, He'll bust out some fun dance moves, too. Next, we have Princess Ruto. She's also from Ocarina of Time. She can change the ground into water to attack enemies or to travel from place to place. Her fighting style keeps opponents at a distance, and it's the perfect match for a Zora Princess. From Twilight Princess, Midna and Agatha join the battle. Here's the Twilight Princess herself, Midna. Just as before, it looks like her true form has been changed by someone's spell. She can use her hair to grab and throw enemies, or to create a fist and punch them. Now for Agatha, the self-proclaimed princess of the insect kingdom. She uses her parasol as a weapon, and also dynamically attacks enemies using the power of her favorite insects. Additionally, even the boss character Zant from Twilight Princess is playable in this game. He swings around the scimitars on his hands, summons various things, and can grow to an enormous size during battle. Tricky moves are definitely Zant's specialty. Next, Skyward Sword. 
Fi fought alongside Link as the spirit living inside his sword. Fi moves fluidly like she's dancing, and she can transform herself into a sword to attack enemies. Her mysterious manner of speaking is present in this title as well. Demon Lord Girahim, who relentlessly pursued Link and Skyward Sword, also appears. He's not just one of the enemies, though. He's a playable character, too. Just like in Skyward Sword, he will lead you around by the nose with a variety of sword attacks. Expect him to go all out during battle as well. In addition to characters returning from past Zelda games, what about new characters that are unique to Hyrule Warriors? This is the Sorceress of Light, Lana, who takes to the battlefield for a book of sorcery. She happens to be one of the key characters in the story. And she always fights with all her might. She can create magic walls, and then push them, pinch foes with them, or destroy them to attack enemies. Okay, next up, grass cutting. I wouldn't say that cutting grass is the foundation of Zelda, but we all know it's something you definitely try out when you first acquire a sword. Cutting grass is not just some simple action you do to while away the time, though. Sometimes you may find hearts, rupees, or even something that makes you wonder, how'd that get in there? Worry not, you can cut grass in Hyrule Warriors too. I hear that they even considered adding a stage where all you do is chop up grass, but unfortunately that didn't make the cut. As you advance the story, some characters will unlock new weapons. For example, the fire rod for Link. The wind waker for Zelda. And a spear with the power of a Deku tree for Lana. With different weapons, you can enjoy completely different actions. So try them all out and find your favorite one. Here's an example. Each warrior has character-specific special attacks. Using these special attacks will let you defeat a large number of enemies at once. In this title, we also added a new system called Focus Spirit. Fill your magic gauge and release it to use Focus Spirit. This will temporarily increase your character's abilities. So try to use it at key moments in battle, along with the right special attacks. Next, let's talk about Bomb Chews. A Bomb Chew is a type of mouse-shaped bomb that moves forward automatically. In Ocarina of Time, there was a bowling-like minigame using this item. In Hyrule Warriors, Bomb Chews now look like this. They're huge. No longer mouse-sized, they're more like giant capybara, with giant explosions to match. Back in a bit. It's not just the characters that are different from those in the core Zelda series. Since we created this unique game based on the Legend of Zelda franchise, the locations used in each battle are inspired by locales that will be familiar to all Legend of Zelda fans. Here's Skyloft from Skyward Sword. Lake Hylia from Ocarina of Time. And Twilight Field from Twilight Princess.
there are more stages inspired by the Zelda universe, mainly from these three titles. We hope you will enjoy them all. Next we have Chain Chomp. Originally, Chain Chomp was a character from the Mario universe, but somehow he made a guest appearance in a 2D Zelda game. I hear it started because Mr. Tezuka, who was working on Mario games back then as well, jokingly put one in a Zelda game. This is Chain Chomp in Hyrule Warriors. Looks like he's now a weapon. Ouch! Characters level up as you use them in battle. Each character starts with certain stats, and by defeating more enemies and gaining experience, they can level up. When you defeat certain monsters, they might drop various materials. Using these materials, you can craft different types of badges that will enhance the warrior's stats. There are many types of enhancements. They can increase a weapon's number of attacks, create longer combos, extend focus spirit time, increase the number of times you can use special attacks and potions, and so on. By leveling up and creating badges, you can greatly enhance a character's stats. Sometimes, you may acquire new weapons during battle. Some of them may have special abilities, called skills. There are several varieties of skills. Some of them increase attack damage, or perhaps increase the chance of finding hearts. When there is an empty skill slot, you can fuse the weapon with another one to increase the weapon's skills. The harder the battle, the higher the chance of enemies dropping better weapons. So try battling and fusing to create your own ultra-powerful weapons. Next up, we have the moon from The Legend of Zelda, Majora's Mask. In Majora's Mask, once the moon hits the ground, it's game over. It made for a very tense atmosphere for the player. In Hyrule Warriors, the moon works like this. Use a hookshot on the moon and... Ha! It never occurred to me to use the moon like that. All right, now I have another exciting mode I'd like to talk about. Please, take a look. This looks like a screen from a classic Zelda game. However, what you're actually looking at is an all-new adventure mode. It's a unique experience that combines the items of Zelda with the gameplay of Hyrule Warriors in a new way. What you see now is the map in adventure mode. Every block on the grid represents one stage with its own unique victory condition. Once the battle starts, you'll be transported to the world of Hyrule Warriors. After you fulfill the victory condition, the grid next to the stage will be unlocked and you can move forward. In some of the maps, you can select the command Search. Using the exploration items you collect on the map, you can find hidden items. This is a bit similar to classic Zelda games. If you are successful at exploring, hard to find items like new weapons and heart pieces will sometimes appear as rare victory prizes. Find treasure through exploration, then battle to retrieve it. As you advance in adventure mode, you can also unlock new playable characters and some weapons only available in this mode. So, please try it out. Next up, we 
<laughs> Next we have... Oh, wait, I think I can hear something. Ah, it's a gold sculptula. Longtime players will remember these guys from their collections. And the more you find, the more items you get. Of course, they're always hiding in odd places that make you say, Hey, why are you hiding there? Finding them is always a challenge. Of course, they are hiding in Hyrule Warriors as well. Do you hear that? It's coming from the direction of a gold sculpture, so you can find it by following the sound. Okay, see you in a sec. In Hyrule Warriors, just like in previous Dynasty Warriors titles, you can enjoy a two-player co-op mode with your family and friends. However, since we have the Wii U gamepad, instead of splitting the TV screen, we made it so each player can have his or her own screen, the TV monitor, or the gamepad screen. This might be a little technical, but in two-player mode, in order to process both screens simultaneously, the screen resolution is reduced slightly compared to when you're playing in single-player mode. That said, just like when you're playing by yourself, we made sure the gameplay is as exciting and fun as it is in single-player. Of course, when you're playing single-player, off-TV mode is also available. Hyrule Warriors is a collaboration title between The Legend of Zelda and Dynasty Warriors. But, at the same time, it's a fun spin-off Zelda title. So, we made sure to add many fan-favorite elements. Hyrule Warriors will be released in North America on September 26th. That's it for today's presentation. Thank you for watching. For a final bit, we're showing off a character you simply cannot forget to mention when discussing Zelda games. Thank you all for watching.